I was 17 and my dad was a great uh, electronics engineer and a craftsman. Um, so me and my dad set about making the guitar. Really it happened because we couldn't afford a guitar. I couldn't afford a Stratocaster or a, or a Gibson or whatever. And we thought, we can make a guitar. Maybe we can make something that's better than anybody's ever made. You know? My dad had that attitude, which I inherit. You know, for things worth doing, it's worth doing properly. And I kind of extend that. I think, you know, for things worth doing, it's worth overdoing. So that's, that's kind of a queen thing. <laughs> um, but this guitar evolved in the hands of me and my dad, we had no power tools, we had no experience in making guitars. We just did a few experiments and tried, tried out various um, methods. And the materials we used were all things that were just lying about. So literally this, the oak panel, which takes the strain here, is um, from an old tabletop. The neck is from a, a fireplace, which was 100 years old at the time. So it's about 300 years old now. Um, you can still see the, the wormholes which were filled in with, <laughs> with matchsticks. And this was all just done with spoke shaves and sandpaper and chisels. And The dot markers were from my mum's um, button box. And mum was in there too. Ah, my mum's in there. And this is from one of my mum's large knitting needles. <laughs> and the way I would fashion something like this was to get a drill and put the thing in a drill, turn the drill and work the file here. So I, it's a kind of home homemade hand-powered lathe right. and I made the, the um, these little rollers here the same way uh, and I think this was the first guitar in the world to have a tremolo that actually had almost zero friction because of the rollers here and because of the fact that the strings go through here almost parallel and are only constrained vertically by one thing this zero fret it's always been a, a talking point and people like to pick it up and see what it's like and they go, oh my god, the neck's thick, you know, which it is, so I like a thick neck, that's, that's the way I like to, to feel things. But once they get playing with these switches, they all go, ah, I need that on my guitar, because this is new too, nobody would ever done this, this actual, what can I call it, this configuration, this way of... Um, of configuring the pickups in any way you want, because most pickups in those days um, were just wired up to a single switch and so you would have maybe three positions on the switch uh, like a, a Telecaster or a Stratocaster but actually the combinations you can get out of three pickups in and out of phase are very many so I had a separate switch for each pickup and a separate phase switch for each pickup and you can get a lot of combinations it means you have an incredibly wide variation of tone of sound because when you were just playing up there before it sounded like there were about three of you well, there were three of me because I was I had delays on here. Okay. Yeah, and that's one of the things I love to play with, and I have for years and years. So I have a single delay which comes out one side, and I have a, another single delay which is twice the length on the other side, and you can play along and and uh, do various things rhythmically and make harmonies and stuff. And it's something I, I get lost in. Yeah, I enjoy it. You know, there's so many things you can do with a guitar, and I think more and more. I've been enjoying the fact that the guitar can speak almost without you touching it. You know, the, the, the higher you make the, the feedback loop, uh, the more the guitar will just spontaneously burst into certain kind of sounds. And playing with that is, is fascinating to me. So you can mix the sounds which the guitar spontaneously puts out with the things that you want to play. Yeah, well, I do have copies, you know, and for certain things, obviously I need a spare for if I break a string. Yeah. And I have a, a copy which has a... Uh, a lowered uh, E string, you know, a drop D tuning. And um, I have a couple of new ones, one which sounds very much like an acoustic guitar, which is a lot of fun, but this is the one, yes. And I remember when we first started touring, uh, a friend of mine who was a journalist at the time, he said, this is great, you see, but don't take your guitar on the road, you know, and I thought, well, if I don't take the guitar, there's a piece of me missing, so I have to do that. And um, Luckily it survived, you know, I, I touch wood every time I say that, you know. Um, it's partly because Pete takes such good care of it, you know, my, my tech, he, he guards it with his life on the road, which is fantastic. And, um, and amazingly, it still works. Yeah. Uh, you know, this thing has never been refretted in its life, okay. which is... I like no. the fact that it looks a little bit used, but not too used. It sure is used, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now it's well used, it's well, well loved and well used. But that's something that nobody can believe. You know, a lot of guitarists that I speak to, they went, oh, you must have refretted it. I go, no, never. Wow. And these frets are the ones that I bought from Clifford Essex for, I don't know, threepence a foot. 
at the time. Clifford Essex was a little shop in uh, Cambridge Circus called Banjo, Mandolin yes, and Guitar. Yes, around there. Yeah, it's gone now. Yeah. yeah, just over here. And I went in and I bought my fret wire and I bought the machine heads. Now, the machine heads I've replaced because machine heads do wear out. Mm. But most of these guitars had a little bit of a top coat, uh, refurbishment by my, my excellent Australian friend Greg. But pretty much this is the guitar that I made. There's nothing, nothing really changed in... I don't know, how many years? 30 years? Maybe, maybe more than that. No, 40 years, 40 years. Yeah, some tracks get written around the guitar because y your hands just fall into certain places, like... Um, that's the riff for uh, Hammer to Fall. Uh -huh. So yes, it was written around that riff. And I did make one other guitar. I made a little Hawaiian guitar, a sort of steel guitar, which I still have. Um, much simpler arrangement than this. I don't think I would make another one now. There's, there's too many other things I need to do in this life. So yeah, so that's what I need. I think making guitars is quite low on my priority. And I have my guitar. Yeah. yeah.